Hey guys, welcome to another video with me, Jake Bulling, and today we're going to be seeing how many copies of Windows 7 I can run on this system here virtually. Now, if you remember in the last video, we actually did a Windows Vista uh, exercise where we actually managed to run 33 copies of uh, Windows Vista and then the system bottleneck completely. So let's see what Windows 7 can do. Okay, guys. So I'm actually really excited to get started with this project. Now, I don't really know how many copies of Windows 7 we can run on this system, but I'm gonna find out shortly. So let's go ahead and start a new virtual machine and we'll set up the first virtual copy of Windows 7. Now, I'm gonna give it the bare minimum of resources it can handle, so 512 megabytes of RAM, and that is uh, non-dynamic, so it can only use the 512 that it has. Uh, we're gonna give it the external switch, we can get out to the internet, and 20 gigs of uh, storage. We're gonna install from the ISO, uh, browse to my desktop you can see i've got the professional image there and then next on that and then finish the last thing we want to do is right click on the settings we want to go in here change the processor from one up to eight now i'm using an i7 processor it's overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz as you can see there in task manager and it's water cooled as well so let's go ahead and start this system up so action starts i'll just click the start button as you can see it loads the system files just going to make some space for that there, like that. Okay, so I'll whiz through this. Uh, all of the other machines will be clones of this machine. Uh, I'll be going up 10 at a time and uh, until basically we run out of resources. So we want English United Kingdom, install now. The setup will start. We can go ahead and then uh, obviously format the hard drive and go from there. Okay, so accept the license terms. Next, uh, custom install. And we can just click next on that. Okay, stay with me guys, stay tuned, and uh, I'll come back once this is ready to go. Okay guys, so we're at the personalization stage. Let's give this a name. So I'm gonna call it Jake, and the piece can be called Jake, that's not a problem at all. Uh, no password at all. And we'll skip this activation stage for now because we're just gonna trial the software. And uh, next for the location, and it's a work network. Let's finish this and, uh, you know, export the virtual machine and re-import it and start the uh, cloning process. So preparing your desktop. It should be pretty, pretty quick actually. Okay, so here's our finished Windows 7 machine here, uh, complete with uh, internet access, obviously on this machine as well, as you can see there, uh, all working fine. Now, what we wanna do is go ahead and go back to Hyper-V here, and I've created a desktop uh, folder called Windows 7. So let's go ahead and right click on this and export it first of all. We're gonna browse that folder, so desktop, Windows 7, select the folder export to that if we scroll across here we should see exporting progress and as you can see that's just uh, scrolling up now what that means is it's saving the state of the machine exporting the vhdx file um, snapshots and all to the desktop folder and from there we can go ahead and re-import this back in as many times as we require we could then move it to another machine obviously we could uh, make modifications or mount that iso uh, ISO, VHDX file rather, and copy files to it so that when we transport it across, the Jake username or the Jake uh, account actually has um, files in it, etc. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So if we minimize Hyper-V Manager down and Hyper and minimize the uh, virtual machine, sorry, we will see on the desktop here a Windows 7 folder. Now in here, the Windows 7 directory, snapshots, the virtual hard disks and virtual machines. Now in hard disk, you'll see the actual VHDX file, which is 7.9 gig or eight gig pretty much. And that's the file we're gonna be re-importing. So let's go back to Hyper-V. Let's go to the uh, import virtual machine button here. And we wanna to go to next, we wanna to browse to that folder. So desktop, Windows 7, seven hard disks, it'll find that in there. So next, and there you go, Windows 7, it can see that created at 10, uh, five to 10 this evening. Next, we want to copy the virtual machine state and obviously create a new user ID. And next, and we're going to give it a new folder subdirectory to go into because it'll have the same name, so number one. 
In fact, no, that should be number two because this is the second VM. So we'll know how many we've done. So two and finish. Now what that will do is that it'll import itself from that desktop file uh, into Hyper-V. Now this typically takes 30 seconds to a minute depending on how large your uh, raw VHDX file is. Uh, on a system with an SSD like this, if you look at Task Manager, you'll see the disk is actually working away at 100% here. So it's actually using all of that read-write power to copy that and import it into Hyper-V in the folder structure we actually uh, specified. So any second now this will be finished and then we can replicate that process again and again and again uh, until we basically bottleneck the, si the system out and run out of memory or run out of resources. So there we go. As you can see, uh, that has imported itself. So if I go connect, if I go to start, now what will happen is it'll boot straight into Windows 7. <laughs> Oh, how cool is that? So now we actually have two identical VMs running side by side. So if I bring this across here, you can see that there are actually, in, in actual fact, two VMs of Windows 7 running perfectly in parallel side by side there. So the idea is let's, you know, speed this process up. Um, I will then obviously come back after I've done another, another eight to make it to ten. Uh, see how the system's getting on. Look at the system resources. So far, the system resources are looking pretty optimistic using what? under 40% on the CPU, 4 gig of RAM, and well, 1% of the SSD there. Well, under 10% anyway. So let's go ahead and do that and check back in shortly. Thanks guys. Cheers for watching. Okay guys, so that's the first 10 done. I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of these and go to start there. You'll see them all starting off. All of the virtual machines are booting up and basically put themselves into the same running state so there you go as you can see all running now with a cpu usage so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and start all of those so if i right click connect you'll see them all pop up on the screen there you go so they are all windows 7 computers running virtually on this system okay so that is actually 10 so far that's how 10 looks pretty cool actually i think you'll agree there you go pretty cool let's carry on then and see how many we can do another 10 coming up Okay, <laughs> so as you can see here, uh, we've got 20 virtual machines uh, up and running. I'm just going to start up the 20th here. Oh, not enough memory. Okay, so what happens now if we go ahead and close all of the windows down? So what I've done is, if you look here, I've got them actually running. Uh, you can see they're actually running just minimized down. So if I come out of this and just close these down, let's see if it reduces the memory down. So yeah, significantly, that went down by about a gig. So now if we right click on this and start, we might be able to start it up. Yeah, there we go. So starting running. So if I double click on that to connect to it, I should be able to see it. Brilliant. Okay, so that's running now. Fine. If I go back to Hyper-V Manage and try and uh, load up the session, so connect to them all. Oh, here we go. I'm expecting a blue screen any second now because all the memory is actually committed already. So I'd assume now that with all 20 running, um, you'll actually see in Task Manager here that it's using 15.6 out of the 15.9 uh, memory, gigabytes of memory, 100% of the CPU there, and 100% of the disk as well. Now, I don't think that this is completely bottlenecking the system. I know it looks like it is, but I think that's just because the sessions are on the screen. If I actually close the sessions down, they'd be running in the background, maybe not using the, the, the full 100%. So if I went ahead and clicked on this and closed them down, close all windows, let's just keep our eye on the task manager here just to see what the um, CPU does in a few seconds time, once it's had a chance to settle down and see if the disk is still 100% usage. No, I was completely wrong there, guys. It seems like it's at 100% the whole time. Uh, the, the disk is the same, so it would actually, you know, turn out that we can only run 20 virtual machines. Now, if I go to import again, and next, let's try and import it one more time. Desktop, seven, seven, Okay, this is the 21st machine, so let's see if we can do 21 and run it. See if it will run it or not. I don't know whether it will, so 21. Okay, let's import that in and let's see if we can actually run 21 machines. That would be quite interesting to see, actually. Okay, so 
this is almost finished importing now as you can see there we go now I've just uh, let the system sit for, for a minute or so and as you can see the CPU usage has halved um, like I said I did think it was just in the middle of just setting the machine up that's all it was doing um, but I was just jumping the gun a little bit there so let's go ahead and see if we can start at this uh, 21st machine will it work yeah there we go so if I double click on it it should start the session and there we go again all right so we're on to 22 now so let's go ahead and import the 22nd machine and see if we can manage that as well let's try it so back in here okay imports come on then number 22 swanky so number 22 is now importing let's see what this does okay there we go so the 22nd machine let's see what this does so start starting running uh, there we go it's running as well apparently so apparently we can run 22 machines okay and the 23rd <laughs> this is really fun guys like i know it's just a strange exercise but actually it is quite fun oh let's do it so 23 uh 23 okay and import that in as well let's see if it can manage this one right so this is going to be uh interesting isn't it that's what it does so copying file nearly there if we look at the disk the ssd is being worked the hardest at the moment 50 percent of the cpu and the memory's not fully committed yet i mean it's nearly there but not quite so start and yeah it's running that one as well connect we should be able to connect to it brilliant i'm going to do a few more guys and i'll come back shortly when it does eventually bottleneck cheers for staying tuned <laughs> okay so guys we got to uh 27 virtual copies of windows 7 professional and the system has officially fallen over now you can see there that all of the memory is actually allocated the disk is working overtime for the swap space of memory it's going like mad i mean i try and run the 28th uh copy uh click start there and you can see it just says run out of memory you can't run it anymore now if we go ahead and load the sessions it absolutely kills the the machine so if i go i don't know six there at a time if i go connect you'll see that those uh sessions will start up but it's quite laggy uh the system itself is running on a bit of a go slow because it's so so inundated with uh with with data and work so i'll go ahead and just close those back down again when it feels like responding to me i just want to show you windows explorer as well so if i go back to windows explorer you can see that there is a uh, 160 gig free still so it's not actually using that much space for 27 copies of seven running at once and you know that's that's quite impressive so i'm just going to arrange these machines now so you can see them all running and i'll come back shortly <laughs> okay guys that's great thanks for watching and i uh, hope you enjoyed the video i'm jay billy as always please like and subscribe share the videos around if you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time <laughs> see you later guys bye